Hello, everybody. This is the one and the only Mr. LP, Stephen Sykes of Enliven Global Media. And we're here doing a little bit of a fall heading into the school year special of a show. A few people have asked to say, when are we going to come back and things to do a special uh, for those of us who were part of the radio days? But I wanted to give an opportunity to get some wonderful guests here. First and foremost, I uh, thank y'all very much for supporting us. And if you have any questions, comments, concern, you can always hit us up at enlivengm. That's E-N-L-I-V-E-N-G-M at gmail.com or hit us up on our uh, Facebook page or what have you, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you feel comfortable with. But first and foremost, I'm going to introduce uh, our wonderful guests. In fact, you know what? I don't have enough money to pay these girls to speak their names, so I'm going to let them say it for themselves. So from down in uh, Georgia, we have the wonderful. Hello. Um, I go by X Chili. You can call me X for today. Okay. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. And then for the up in the northeast in the New England area, we have the wonderful. My name is Vicky J. Hello, everyone. How uh, are you doing, young lady? I'm doing great. How are y'all doing? Doing, doing, well. good. doing good, doing good. First and foremost, uh, how has your summer been? Um, it's been a little bit of interesting. It's been a while since we got on here, but how has your summer been so far? It's been blessed. I have no complaints. I enjoyed the sun. I like heat, so it is, gives me gives me a reason to go to the beach to the pool. So it's been a blessed. All right, and for you, young lady. We have been having a great time making lots of memories and um, lots of firsts with my daughter. So, been having a great time. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, let's get the party started here. First and foremost, uh, the biggest thing, we usually cover a lot of different topics that some people don't get a chance to talk to, but some of these issues have been uh, of greater importance to our community and our community at large. It's not just here in America, but around the world in the um, state of, of our communities. So the first and foremost, I want to talk about this little bit of an issue uh, that we have going on with uh, Jay-Z and the NFL. And for those who don't or may not be familiar with, uh, Jay-Z recently you know, signed a deal with him and his Rock Nation of uh, an NFL for uh, the ability to produce the Super Bowl and supposedly uh, have some other deals in the works and possibly uh, be a part owner of a team or what have you. And uh, some other things that were not exactly very clear, uh, just the overall fluff statement that, you know, you're partnering with the, with the NFL. And that has made a lot of people upset for a variety of different reasons, given the fact that you're initially supposed to be working or was working with Mr. Kaepernick uh, regarding his uh, the uh, interest in the information that he's been putting out regarding police brutality, women's rights and other issues. And the NFL has had, unfortunately, a long history with ignoring a variety of these issues and wanting us to just play and keep quiet and ignoring a lot of the issues that's going on, especially domestic violence as well. I uh, would like to get you ladies' thoughts on this situation uh, or, you know, please, the floor is uh, yours, ladies. Well, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, first of all, so for me, it's it's kind of it's not as simple as everyone wants to make it out to be. Because first of all, in my opinion, you can't complain or say anything about Jay Z accepting this accepting this area when you if you're still watching the NFL. If you still turn your TV on, if you sit back, if you go to your boy's house, you go to the bar to enjoy the game. I just I can't hear you because of the fact that what are you doing? You're talking all this cap, cap, cap stuff, but you're not helping. You're not trying to protest. You're not going out and buying his old jerseys to promote or to say, hey, this is who I want back. So I just, I can't hear anything you're saying about Jay-Z. That's number one. Number two, in my opinion, look, everyone knows Jay-Z has always been about the money. So it's not as though he's coming out and he's like doing a straight 180 when that's what he's always been about. Like, yeah, he has talent, he has music, um, he's for the culture, but he's for the money. From day one, he's been about the money. So, I'm so, are you really shocked? Are you really pissed about that? Third, we don't, like, do I think Cash should have a fight? You know, it's not that he was barred and he lost his job. So that'd be different. 
you know, if he lost his job for that, we all know why he's blackballed. Even if they don't want to say blackballed, we all know that's what you know, happened. That's the settlement. We we all know it was laid out in front of when the issues started coming on the whole night. So one, I understand mm -hmm. that he's honest for them. Like for them, they were they were trying to look at him as a troublemaker. We don't want to put that guy back in because then it makes us look like yeah, we admit that we're wrong. And we know that I gotta do that. And we don't know if Jay Z is. I don't have his phone number. I'm not talking to him or Cap. I don't know if he's talking to Cap. Like, yeah, I need your help. How can we bring in different initiatives that you think are positive? We know none of that. So for everyone to be jumping on and saying down with Jay Z or how they appear, no one out here is doing anything. Would you prefer if someone that was not in in the any kind of uh? Any kind of melanin community would that be better? Because at oftentimes, when it's quote unquote trying to help the, the different minority classes, we have someone we, we end up with a major complex because we have someone who's not in it at all. So I don't understand what people want. Could it be better? It could always be better. But for me, there's nothing to complain about at this point in time. Thank you, Jay. I agree with all of X's points. I just wanted to add a few of my of my own. Um, firstly, about Kaepernick, he received a settlement. <laughs> He's good. He's got like I think it was a hundred mil. Um, so that should I mean that certainly would have taken him at least a couple of years into his uh, career as a football player. Also, as an activist, he is receiving a lot of money as well, mm -hmm. right? Um, book deals and appearances and all of that. So Cap is doing just fine and probably even better than he would have done in the NFL. That's one. Two, Jay absolutely is about the money, but Jay is also about himself and his culture, as you mentioned. And so given the other things that he has been doing behind the scenes, including um, helping to bail out activists during the protests against police brutality, starting up his own cannabis uh, business and employing people who have previously been jailed for selling weed. Um, his, um, he does a lot of things quietly. And his, that line that from the ape-ish uh, video where he talked about the Super Bowl and he had that visual of the gentleman kneeling, it tells me that if he's gonna sign a deal with the NFL, it is going to be in his best interest or in the interest of the things that he is already uh, dealing with behind the scenes. So I think that the initial shock of it appearing hypocritical is what has people being all, you know, reactionary. But based on what we've seen of Jay and his evolution as a man as well, I feel like this is, we, we need to sit back and wait and see what he actually does. I don't think, I, I, I mean, based on the stuff that, um, that he was talking that was being said uh, uh, with the um, the guy that he's working with in the NFL. It appears that they want to make some efforts to appear to be diverse and all of that. But if, and I mean, get, also I think about uh, Beyonce's previous uh, NFL performance, like her most recent one, uh, where she she <laughs> really kind of stuck it to him. You know what I mean? So I just feel like if Jay is going to sign this deal, he's already a billionaire. So, you know, he's got a lot of pull of his own. If he's going to sign this deal and he he is going to do this because it is going to, it's going to be an opportunity for him to do something very impactful and in the best interest of the Black people that he is constantly putting at the forefront of his missions. So, yeah. I, uh, I agree with you ladies, uh, but there's a couple of caveats that um, I want to throw out there and get you uh, ladies thoughts on. It's, first off, this is not his first time being involved with sports and supposedly the same statements mirror the same thing when he was uh, with Prokoff when he signed a deal with the Nets some uh, 10 years ago or so. And these were the same type of things they said, oh, I'm going to do, but it did not translate that way. It was more of I'm trying to get in and make sure I bring in the hip hop culture, rap culture, which is very heavily involved in sports, especially with the NBA, uh, the style, the street, the culture, all of that stuff. And somehow by having Jay-Z, I'm going to bring all these stars and all this entertainment that didn't work. So going forward, we had to show up in a bunch of Nets games 
I bring my wife, Beyonce, to show up in courtside so I could look like Jack Nicholson and everything else to try to help take it. And when that wasn't going well, and then they made the subsequent move to the Barclays Center, remember, they had to, uh, he did this series that was like maybe eight, 10 concerts just to try to get people to come in. And part of the reason with the Barclays Center, with the whole gentrification and changeover, the city happens all the time, I get it. But part of that was the same statements he's saying now, it was the same statement then that they were going to help the community things down. The whole Barclays Center and things is nice, but again, as what happens with gentrification, uh, gentrification, excuse me, the rent went up, lot, not as many jobs for people of color, where everything was strict with background, degrees, whatever, just for some of the many, the basics of jobs, except for the cleaning jobs, you know, but anything of power or importance or and representative, a lot of these jobs were not made available uh, to us as promise, nor the money back into the community in the same way. So that was one. Two, the issue regarding um, helping, you know, we have this big problem in our system where, uh, you know, a lot of people are being arrested and stuck on court for waiting, or waiting bail or what have you. But I posted in some information that somebody obviously may not be familiar with, but uh, his answer to this was he signed a deal with a company to provide ankle braces to all these people to let people out. And I thought that was very misgiving uh, towards that. So now I am releasing. Now I got to be on a, instead of the normal process of being released on bail or recognizance or what have you, now I got to have an ankle bracelet as if I am guilty. Um, and it's already putting a precedent on the person of color. Uh, so that was where that is. And the deal, you signed a deal with. In, in the past, he's always been looking at deals about his money. I've always felt that he was, I'm not shocked by this because he was always about his money and he's always about his deals in terms of making himself look forward. He's done a lot of the similar things in the past with some of the other head music execs where people are not getting paid. There's all these issues. Same thing with Puffy, same thing with some of these other uh, executives. So you know, Russell Simmons, all these things that happens all the time. So he's not any different than anybody else. Thoughts? I don't have any. Um, for me, the biggest thing, the biggest thing that Smokey just said was that caught my attention, which is a whole different topic, is the whole prison thing. I don't think that, it, I don't think any conversation should be combined. No. <laughs> when it comes to the prison, Prison talk and and bail. That's a whole nother situation. Well, I was bringing that up to what she was saying that his his community. He's he's always he's to what Vicky J's point was about. He's about his community, but it was like okay, he's done this, and then the same thing he's saying about the NFL, what he's looking to do. You have a track record. This is not his first time. This is not his second time. You have a track record of signing these big deals. I'm about. I'm going to help bring in this stuff and blah blah blah, improve the culture, all of these things. But you, each and every time, you kind of drop the ball heavily. As long as it, but except for his making money, but it feels like he's always being used. He or he's allowing himself to be used as long as he's making his money to be as a face of us people of color to say okay because he has full. He like, people like his music, he's gotten involved in all this stuff. So we're using you as the um, uh, uh, Willie Lynch person. We're gonna bring, it feels more like we're gonna elevate this guy to bring everybody else in to make you feel really good so we can have a way to control you and keep you quiet. <laughs> That's what it feels like. But to, uh, to your point, we may have to be on a wait and see um, battle before things again. But then if it does not turn out again, how many more chances are we going to keep saying, hey, it's your third, second, third time doing this and you still keep dropping the ball? I was using that prison thing as an example of the same statements. If you look at the statement that he put out with the NFL, the same statement that he put out there, the same statement that he put out with the Nets and the 40 40 clubs. <laughs> so, look, for me personally, regardless of your name, your status, your job, your education, like for me, I'll give you a shot. You know I'll, I'll let you. You can 
say what you want to say, but I, it's your actions. So again, I have to see what he's going to do. And for me personally, like just because it's Jay Z or it's Beyonce or whoever it can be, like I just, from to me, anyone who follows someone simply because of their name, simply because of that of who they are, they're not doing it for the right reasons anyway. So if you have a conviction and you think the NFL is doing wrong and you think that they're not behind the community, in my opinion, simply because you see the face of Jay-Z, you shouldn't be like, oh, we all good now. That's your job. That's your responsibility to make sure it's your community. You're not living like Jay-Z. You're not his next door neighbor. So he's not speaking for you. At least he's not speaking for me. He can say a few things. I'm like, oh, okay, I feel you, Jay. But Jay ain't been where I'm at since how many years? So to me, I'm following him just because it's Jay Z. Well, Jay Z say they good now. You gotta check yourself because you got you don't even know where you were going right now. You don't know what you're going to. So mm -hmm. I would be interested in seeing the data to back up what has improved versus what hasn't on those deals that you mentioned mm -hmm. uh, before I make a, you know, final opinion on that. Um, I do feel like there is a major difference, in my opinion, between the deal with the NFL or the reason for the deal with the NFL and the deal with the two uh, stadiums. I feel like, and, and with the Nets, I mean, like there was no, was there any sort of political, you know, uh, controversy surrounding him, you know, before he signed to deal with the Nets. I don't recall that. I feel like the the sort of undertone of his signing with the NFL, it has like it's a little more riding on it, and it's gonna right. it's gonna be watched more closely. And so I feel like there's more of an incentive to actually show and prove. So right. I still right. feel like we need to wait and see what's gonna happen. Yeah. Okay. Good. Even, you know, right. even with the the uh, the deals that you just mentioned, I heard from what you said that there were some improvements, but there were also some things that fell short. And that sounds a lot like pretty much anything political that we've dealt with in the past, like forever, ever. And not well, just in the case of Jay Z. It's like we get a lot of promises from people with power and pull, but we have to also remember that they are not the only person involved in that. And that there's other people of power and people who are higher above them that need to be appeased in order for them to get what they want. It's a lot of give and take there. And so there's, they're not always gonna be able to deliver on every single uh, note that they said they were going to do, but they're of course going to try their best to at least prioritize certain things. Which is why I feel like, you know, let's just see what he actually does with this. I don't, I don't watch sports. <laughs> I'm not a somebody who is invested in the NFL. So I can't really even tell you that I boycotted the NFL. I didn't watch it anyway. But, um, you know, I definitely tune into YouTube after the fact for the halftime show. I do not <laughs> watch it when it actually airs. I don't know if they still get them ratings. I don't think they do. But, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I think that the back end of things is where stuff ends up happening. And what he does with his money from this is what we need to pay attention to since since the, the sort of, I guess, disappointment is that Jay-Z is involved with the NFL. So we need to see what Jay-Z does with his cut and then make a determination from there whether or not you want to cancel. Right, and that is true. I wonder, one thing you made a point uh, uh, about the seat, I wonder if all the people that are, I'm not happy about it to be overall, but I wonder if all the people uh, who are planning are the same people that, okay, when time um, named Kaepernick Man of the Year, I'm sorry, Nike made uh, Kaepernick, uh, the, uh, I think Time did anyway, but uh, when Kaepernick was named Nike Man of the Year or what have you, everybody went to go buy Nike gear and made them a ton of more money when I was like, that's not the point. If you were going to do it, buy his, buy his stuff or if you're going to do spend that much energy and you saw within a two week span everybody from celebrities and everybody local don't got money got money whatever just threw everything in nike and you saw their stock rise by the buttload and if we had did that same effort in terms of 
writing your police chief, local police chiefs and your representatives and spending money within your uh, communities, how much better that would have been better instead of giving money to Nike. So, so if you were complaining about Jay Z deal, were you the ones that buying giving Nike Nike money? Just a thought. Um, regarding that. The set, next thing I want to uh, talk, uh, touch on is that we're seeing a large rise in uh, Netflix and online media, obviously, um, having a lot more um, involvement with uh, people of color in terms of um, stories told by Asian Americans, uh, Middle Eastern. Uh, we had the uh, one earlier this year that, um, that was a uh, foreign film that was nominated. Uh, we had, uh, and we're seeing now with a recent Eddie Murphy movie, and just a bunch of different people now, not just comedies, but also movies representing us in a variety of different lights. Uh, what do you feel about the rise of us being involved in Netflix and other media such as Hulu and Amazon um, versus uh, the aspect of like we're using them, but when we had the opportunity for ourselves, we're not willing to spend that same amount of effort? Yeah. Well, what do you mean when we use us? Okay, well, um, okay, let me, let me, I'm sorry, let me phrase that better. If we took the same movies or what have you and we put it, let's say, for, there, was a, there was a streaming channel called Black and Family TV. Now, obviously, they don't have the money that Netflix did, but if we took the time out to invest in, let's say, in uh, within our communities, because we speak a lot about investing into our own communities. But uh, we seem that when the powers that be that happen to be majority of um, uh, white culture, but then and we throw our money in there. But if it's something of a platform that we have that we get or an opportunity to keep your own money, let's say if I put the same movie up and say, hey, support us on Patreon or go to our PayPal, or whatever, so we can produce this movie, we won't do it. But then if we'll sit here and send the uh, tons of uh, requests that goes to Netflix and we'll give them the money and stuff. Why is that? Um, well, it sounds to me like if they're already paying for a streaming service, because a lot of people do have these streaming services already, right. then that means that you already have the, um, the audience and you already have like almost built in ratings. You also have a lot of power and pull in that these are pretty much corporations and the the ability to make that reach uh, is not necessarily easier because there's a lot of content on these uh, streaming services, but um, you're more likely to be able to fund your next project if you're going to be working with somebody like Netflix. You don't always have to place your stuff on Netflix, but you can take that money from Netflix and then turn around and do some produce something smaller. I have a friend named Latasha. Um, she has a YouTube channel called Just Latasha, and she also. Um, has been a guest, uh, a recurring guest on the Grapevine TV, which is another YouTube channel. She now, bec uh, she's an independent writer and she had her own uh, show called Sit Black and Relax. She self-produced this show. Um, and, you know, granted, she, you know, did an amazing job of putting this together on her own with her own money while she's being a bartender and also doing this stuff on the side. But she was able to take the Grapevine TV. She was able to take guest appearances on other shows. She was able to take the little bit of you know money that she received from Sit Black and Relax and then stream her show on Amazon. Mm -hmm. She was then able to start Aurora TV, which is her own service, but it is slow going. Mm -hmm. And she works with people who are in the same boat as her. But again, she wouldn't have been able to do Aurora TV without working with Amazon. Right, but so the, 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 and that's my point. Why uh, do we have to, as a community, um, and I'm not complaining for what she did. Um, that that that's a wonderful thing. Um, no more different than what any of us will probably do in business. But my uh, my point is, is that uh, I feel bad that we had to wait till it gets there when. If we had thrown in our efforts into then, which she's growing, she could have probably stayed independent and got a world TV beforehand without the Netflix. Use Issa Rae for an example. For years, what, 17 years, the, uh, you know, um, awkward black girl on YouTube or what have you, however long it was, before 
and she kept pushing it to the different platforms and eventually HBO got to her and she's been rolling ever since. But imagine now, it was a very highly rated channel, got thousands of views, millions of people of views, but we did not throw in the money then. And whereas obviously she's getting money from HBO and then she'll eventually get the money, but how powerful would it have been if we were able to keep, provide her the support without having to go to a major market and, think, well, and build up our own. YouTube is no different than uh, Netflix, Hulu, right. Amazon. It's it's all corporation. It's all corporation. Right. 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 I think what you're forgetting, what you're missing is advertisement. Like everyone okay. knows HBO. Everyone knows Netflix. You know, right now everyone knows YouTube. So it would- And that's how you make your money off this Exactly. Stuff. It would require someone someone creating their own their own entity and then growing over the years and over the years because youtube didn't come out overnight no we all know about it now because it's big but starting out people were just putting on videos not the other and it blew up so it will require someone within the community to start off doing that it might be your friend uh i missed her, i forgot her name but it might be your friend maybe one day she'll eventually It'll, and she'll have it and she'll be able to branch out but if there's if that following out there just think about everyone over the world knows about hbo everyone over the world knows because it's cheaper cheaper to do that than blockbuster and cable right and cable so they took businesses out because they were able to because of their cheapness and they were able to spread the word fairly cheap as well and if I'm not okay. mistaken, Netflix started out like Redbox, right? Oh yeah, they, yeah. Netflix was struggling. Yeah. They yeah, yeah, Netflix was there. struggling for a long time. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and they still oh. under they still over budget. Yeah. So so the, so the point is, you can't say, well, how come we're not throwing in money to to her friends, mm -hmm. her friends channel, or this? If you don't know about it, how, you can't watch it. But well, also don't collectively but if, have but if you're on Amazon uh, well, and I'm scrolling pull something like that off. I'm sorry. Who started Netflix? I'm That's sorry. what I want to know. I want to know who started Netflix, how they started Netflix, because I imagine it's somebody who had a little something, something, little well, something. Yeah, you know? they did, they did, and so, and it was we, struggling for a few years. Do we collectively? I mean, I know we spend a lot of money, but do we collectively have the power? and pull or have the connections to make something like that happen unless we are a, to call it back, unless we are a Jay-Z or Beyonce? I think we collectively we uh, we do. We spend, what's the word, what, two, three trillion dollars and things like that? I mean, influence. I mean, influence. Right. I mean, influence. Collectively, we could, but we do not pool. We do not pool in that manner. Mm -hmm. now, okay. So that's the whole thing. Collectively, sure. You, if you could knock on all everyone's door and say, give me $100, I got this business plan. Give me $100, I got this business plan. First, they're going to be like, well, I got one too. This is, this is, the, this is the one thing about the community. Like, you know, so, so collectively, do we have it? Yes. Do we bring it together? No. No. So as a whole, we do not. My cousin, I'm going to tell you guys a story, and then I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> no, no, no. Please tell your story. Oh. My, okay, so my cousin was speaking with a, um, a, it was, she was getting her hair done. So it was at the, at the hair shop, not a, but it wasn't the, um, it wasn't the, the salon where you buy hair, buy like hair oh, products. Like the beauty supply? Thank you. Yes. So she had a question because as, as we all know, not to be racist, but many of the beauty supply shops, many of the, um, Manicure salons. Manicure, I'm like, right? yeah. <laughs> I already know before you're gonna say it. <laughs> we know who owns them. Yes. Right. Not all. Not all. <laughs> but many. Okay. But I many. Most. Many. I, I, would, I would say probably most who own mm -hmm. it are of some type of Asian descent. Right. So she was talking to the lady, and she was like, "Like, how are you?" So her question was. When you guys come over, are you getting money from the government? Are they giving you money to help you start these businesses? Mm -hmm. Right? The lady's response was, well, you know, we have certain things to help us, but where they get their money from, they're not coming over with money. Where they're getting their money from is they're pooling it. 
So they get like 20 people together, 20 agents who might not know one another. Okay, but they're in the same, let's, let's just say Chinese for now. Okay, so, so they are some, it was in that community, maybe the same neighborhood, same wherever it is. So they'll get 20 people. They don't have to necessarily be friends. And they'll each say, okay, I'm going to put in, say, $5,000. So we're all going to give Samantha $5,000, right? We're going to all give Samantha $5,000, and we're going to work in her shop. We, even though we pay, we're still going to work with employees. When Samantha starts making money, she's going to give us our money back, and then we're going to all give it to the next person. When they've done their time in that shop, now you get your $5,000 from everybody in that area. So that's how they keep getting the businesses, because they're all putting in 1000 5000 whatever it is, so that they have that collection. They do that for homes and everything else, yeah. For well, that collection, we don't, we don't have that kind of, we don't have that pool. But that was that was her thing. She was like, "Oh, this is what we do. When we come over, we're like, okay, we this 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 this. So you give me this money when I got it. I'm giving yours back, and then I'm getting giving it towards your business. So they have that. They had they had that. It was amazing that they even had five thousand to put in. Right. Well, I'm just giving. I don't know too many. I mean, I know it's hypothetical, but I'm just saying yeah. I don't know too many people with but, a savings these days. So well, that's, that's part I'm not of the sure. issue. Well, see, to me, that's part of the issue. I don't care if you make if you make a dollar per hour. You put a quarter to the side. You put. I know you got bills. You put that quarter to a side. Just as you you think, think about this. I have I have a friend, and growing up, she could not stand her mother because they were poor, which is not the reason. But she said that she went without food or as much because her mother was determined. I got to get his money to the church. I got to get his money, you know what I'm saying? So you hungry, your kids are hungry, but you still finding the money to get to the church, you know, over, because she wasn't giving, and she, and she was giving over her, her 10%, over her, you know, but that's what she felt she had to do. So you have to understand, people go get Starbucks coffee for like $8. People go out and get McDonald's instead of buying, you know what I'm saying, instead of buying their food and making it last because it's easier. So everyone can have a savings. I'm not saying it's going to be oh, yeah. a large amount, but you can, if you get, if you get $8 an hour, minimum wage is what, seven fifty, seven eighty. So we're going to say $8 an hour, basic. I granted, some of them are different, but basic is $8 an hour. If out of that, you put $2, to the side, say I will not touch it, and you do that for every check, for every hour. If you're gonna build a savings, but a lot of people are like, oh well, no, I want. Oh, you know, that iPhone came out. I know it's fifteen hundred dollars, but I gotta call people. I'm so what? I can go. I can go to a Family Dollar. I got a thirty dollar phone, and I call people just fine. I'm what? <laughs> I'm not paying fifteen hundred. My first call was eight hundred. Y'all doing the most. But this is saving. Was eight hundred dollars? Yes, I talked to lady. So wow. I was on my way to college. I wish. And I wanted a car. <laughs> I wanted a car. Well, I had been working. I've been working since I could. So I was working, and I wanted to buy a car. I was on my way to college, and so my uncle said, "Oh, I ran to this lady. She's selling this car. She'll give it to you for twelve thousand. I was like, "Tell I give her eight. He went back talking to the lady. She said she would take a thousand. I said, I said, tell her I will give her eight. I'm not giving her a thousand for this car. He came back two weeks later and said she'll take the eight. Thank you very much. So I took my car. That was my first car. That's what's up. <laughs> but the thing is, and that's my point. Uh, and I posted some graphics about there and some links for people to look at. Uh, but the issue is, is that uh, you know, in twenty, in the twenty eighteen, going into twenty nineteen. Um, for African American businesses grew four hundred percent, but we still need investments. The, the amount of money, and, and this is what lead, is leading into that. And the reason why I, I phrased it in the necessary is, is that yes, they have business, yes, Netflix and all them, and they took time. Any of them, even HBO when they first started, they were slowly going out of business before they turned over. It's the uh, with their profits. The thing about it is, is that we speak a lot, and we always talk about building together and building our own when you know now we can get the quality of our shows and things like up when will we eventually and, and i'm not speaking this as anything against an eight towards 
YouTube, Netflix, or things like that. I was using YouTube as an example because obviously, yes, there's advertising. Yes, it's under Google now. But you have uh, the opportunity to say, hey, more control is where you can send the money to the support. And obviously, if you're doing an ad, you get your ad uh, monetization through that. But the thing about it is, is that when do we get the opportunity, or sorry, when do we take advantage of our opportunity to, like I said, pull together so we could build, let's say, uh, whatever channel at the time. Now that you have all these streaming services, and there's so many of them. Now, obviously, that may be not that may not be the best play now but i was saying is that we had the opportunity then to build it up and even now if we build our own channels we did we had black and family tv died black family channel died you know a variety of other different things we say hey there's all these great shows that's been featured us but they fell out you know when are we going to start pulling it together or what needs to happen I set this up, so sorry. <laughs> I see. I, you know what? It, I think it is in, in what you uh, surround yourself with, how you view this, what your perspective is. Because I see so many things kicking off that mm -hmm. will, over time, as we as we just discussed, turn into um, turn into something major. Like I mentioned, Grapevine TV. It is a millennial, it's a, a, a channel on YouTube that has millennials from different walks of life talking about current events and topics that concern the community. And every week they have a new episode. They also take it throughout the diaspora. They've been to the UK, they've been to France. Um, and, they, and, and it is a uh, great vine TV is um, for uh, black and brown people, primarily black audience. Okay. Um, so that's one thing and it, and it has grown quite a lot even just within this year. Um, they're currently casting for anybody who's listening that's in the New York area. <laughs> so check them out on Twitter and YouTube at Green by TV. But um, yeah, like there's there's The Read um, and, and several other podcasts that are um, specifically geared towards black people uh, throughout the diaspora. People um, can listen to those sort of things. And so I think that the new um, wave of, um, being able to take more ownership over your media, um, whether or not it's through a major corporation, um, is allowing us to have a little bit more freedom. And I think that, you know, as they gain uh, capital, they can turn that into their own network or their own streaming service. But all of this is still relatively new and it's going to take time for us to be able to have our own pull and power and money in order to make that happen. And I think more people, um, especially throughout social media, are starting to um, you know, express that they are looking for opportunities to represent smaller creatives. And so mm -hmm. we're perhaps not seeing it because that's not what's on our timeline, uh, but, that it, but it is actually happening. Mm -hmm. I just wanna throw that out there. That's Excellent job and plug and make sure you uh, put down your cash app on the thing when we finish so that you can get your <laughs> shot. Um, we both of you are mothers, um, you know, full time mothers, along with all the wonderful things that you do. And uh, one of the things I've been hitting from the jump uh, before it started, before it got attention, and now obviously is the issue regarding separating uh, children um, at the border and things. Now, I want to preface the, uh, and, and I get it that we do need to have some form of an immigration policy or what have you, but uh, I'm coming from a different perspective uh, with it. And there's perspective that I want to come from it, uh, besides that does not get talked about, is that uh, there is, for me, uh, personally, and for many others, it's a form of racism. It's not nothing new. It's been done to all cultures over the years at some point. Uh, I told a very powerful story of what my grandmother and my great-grandmother had to go through when uh, they would take kids and separate, and even those who are citizens, um, just as a means of, you know, torture and terrorism. And we talk about, well, they shouldn't bring their kids if they really wanted to or what have you, but we don't know many people are speaking about situations that they don't know or don't understand. 
there are many people here in the U.S. that when they try to escape with a child, people are because of abuse and they take their children, but they don't seem to uh, make that same equation. Uh, when there are many, and my thing is, is this rule is only applied to people of color. If they, if you know, I don't agree with separated children, but it would be a less of a fight for me if you were offering the same uh, plight equally like there are millions of people who are canadian and you're in the various parts of europe but because of their skin tone uh and their country background they're not separated and they're not put in cages they're not going through all of these different things so and then the last part about that is that um given the fact that the u.s and these are not conspiracy theories these are facts given the fact that the U.S. has a long history working with, uh, independently and with other countries, even countries who we are at war with on doing experiment, experimentations, um, surgeries while they're alive, all these different types of things to adults and children. Some of it has been documented. Some people have known who have lived through it, a variety of these different situations. There's no type of protection that's going on with these kids. There's already reports of uh, rape, being tested, given medicine, and they're sick, if we know it's medicine or not, all types of craziness. What are your thoughts regarding this? For me, there's no, there's no, there's no, oh, it's okay because it's doing equal. To me, it's, it's, first, I think it's very important that people understand that so being separated are not the kids whose parents are coming in the tunnels illegally, had them in their trunks, putting the child in danger, different things. A lot of these parents, these kids are moderated, are coming the legal way. They're coming to the border, they're coming to the actual crossing point, saying, "Hey, I need help." And then you have people lying. Well, let me talk to you over here, and we're gonna let we're gonna let Sam, you know, watch the kids while we have our discussion and while you fill the paperwork. And the next thing you know, you hear the kids screaming, "Mommy, mommy, don't take me!" That's never okay. Exactly. I commit a crime right now. I can go rob a bank with my child in the car. And will they take my child? Sure. And it's understandable because I'm robbing a bank. But what they would do is who is the next of kin? Can they come and get your child? Oh, before we put them in foster care. They're not leaving my child in some hole. They're not, you know, they're not doing that because why do they know I was so, I will own the whole US? Okay. So this is the part that I, this is the part where people are like, where they just, where they just don't come, or they did this and that, or whatever lie they want to tell themselves to make it okay. It is never okay for you to kid someone's child because you don't want them to come to the door. I don't want to see people selling at my door when I'm sleepy, but I'm not going when you when I open my door, I'm not going to push the parent away and grab your child and bring it inside. It's a kidnapping. Plain and simple. Just because you have the government behind you backing it does not change the fact that it is still legal. You cannot steal people. They are stealing people. I'm still waiting for them to find how many kids are missing right now. They, they, that's the problem. It's been well over 20. It, these are these numbers are running into the thousands. Not only that, they're keeping, it's been so many crazy numbers, but we know they're high. Uh, there's kids that are now missing that they can't even return the kids back because they don't know what's happening. They keep in a lot of these locations uh, shipped to where they're not even keeping them around the border. They ship them to Montana, New Jersey, Alaska, wherever. Every, Almost every state has a decision with a child. But but the thing is, that doesn't make sense. If you are planning on reuniting, if you ever had it in your mind to reunite the kids with the parents once it was done, why would you ship them 10 hours away? Why, why would you ship them on a plane? None of it makes sense. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, when I look at it, I look at it as child trafficking because I don't know where these kids are. So in my opinion, you done sold these kids to the highest bidder because you're doing some little back shady deals or mm -hmm. whatever. You don't just lose. You don't lose. You know how hard it is to lose a kid in a crowd of people, but you're going to lose. They act, like they're, they act like they're losing your keys when really? this is like a real, this is your offspring. This is These are your, yeah. your babies. Yeah. Well, you just, and the just like, well, gee, I just don't even know what it blah, 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 blah. But listen, let me tell y'all. 
<laughs> the way I feel about this, honestly, I'm like, woo, because it it really does harken back to having no agency because you are viewed as less than human. Think Thank slavery. You think the Native Americans when they were separated and they do this sort of uh, indoctrination to these kids. You separate them from their influence, from their primary influence, and you put your own influence in them. That's why they're sending these babies to Montana and all these other Midwestern uh, uh, states, pardon me, because they're trying to A, enslave these babies, B, perform some kind of sex trafficking or something like that, more than likely, and B, I'm sorry, C, I was on C. They are also um, trying to get these children to think the way, the white supremacist way. That's what it's it saying, is. It's saying that right now, um, and, and, and we know this number a lot. The Trump administration is saying it's only 700 kids. We know that's <laughs> that is garbage. That's a lie because they, we were waiting last year when he was saying they were like a thousand and he, and they were, and they blatantly said, we don't know where they are. And that was a thousand before the mass rush that came after everyone was like, oh, he's really trying to close the border down. Go now. And, so, and, they, and, and they're picking kids that are, here's, here's what the point that, that, I, that people are not getting. A lot of these kids are coming from legal points of entry. This is right. what I do. Yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's, not, it's not a lot. They're trying to do things the right way. Like 90%. Like this is not, and see, they keep saying illegals. Is that I'm not illegal. If I come knocking on your door saying, can you help me? How does that make it illegal? Is that a exactly. refugee? Yeah. Right. If I break into your house, now I'm illegal. These right. Are this is a, these are people seeking refuge or asylum, and that is 100% legal and within yeah. their right to do. Yes. So the part that becomes illegal is when you separate, and you shouldn't have to separate these people from their children in order to fill out paperwork. That's some BS. It is, but that's, but that's their excuse. They're, yeah, that's their tactic. I get it. But I'm just over here like, mm. like it just makes me so angry that pe- we're sitting back and watching this. And meanwhile, there are fools on the internet who are lusting after this chick named Ice Bay. I miss, I miss Ice Bay. That there's this this woman. I forgot her name. They were just talking about her on the read. Uh, there's this young woman who is one of the officers, one of the ICE officers who is patrolling one of these concentration camps. And she has been dubbed Ice Bay because she is a moderately attractive young woman who took some pictures and posted them on the internet. I'm going to look up right now. I want to see this Ice Bay. Yeah, I'm about to get, I'm about to get the picture now. <laughs> and that is what is prioritized over these, um, these men, women, and children who are seeking refuge in our country, lacking basic hygienic needs and food. What gets me is like now, of course, now you and I both know all of us. Any, anyone listening on Wait, this? Uh, okay. Usually, if you take a picture in a uniform, mm-hmm. okay, to post on mm-hmm. social media for your own personal gain or anything, that's automatic. Uh, that's supposed to be a conflict of, not conflict of interest, but it is supposed to be in poor taste, uh, professionally speaking. But they have actually advocated for her and spoken up about her and, and pretty much given their seal of approval that she can post as she likes while she racks up followers and gets ad money for tummy, flat tummy tea and all that. I'm disgusted. It, it, it's, it's just it's just stupid. Uh for uh, all of these uh, different things. I'm going to share on the screen this Ice Bay thing here, as you can see here, and all these pictures, and then she got regular pictures of here looking, um, you know, making faces, pictures, what have you, and, and all of this stuff. And I find it interesting that usually, like you said, you would go to jails and portraits. She's wearing a waist trainer or some type of out, some, I'm sorry, protective gear and makes your waist small, all of this stuff. Really? And anything else? It's just like, come on. Uh, you, you know, you know, um, you know what? Time out. I find it weird from, from what I recall. From what I recall, when people in the Senate were going to look, they were stopping cameras, right? Am I am I tripping? Say that a question again. Weren't they stopping cameras saying you can't go past this area or you can't come? But Uh I can take pictures. Well, why can't I go past? Apparently, pictures are okay. 
right? If right. she can post pictures, and she can take pictures in uniform at the gate for people. With people behind her that are in that are in these cages, right? So, so now I'm curious. How come? How come camera crews? How come? How come outside people can't take pictures? If apparently it's not a safety precaution, where we don't allow pictures in here because ice bears putting them. So now I'm confused. And then now what they're doing is like everybody says, "Oh, it does look fine." Just a lot of people. They have to let people. You have to get permission as a news agency or politician or whatever the schedule they know when they're coming so we're gonna make sure everybody looks clean whatever you know from what we're understanding these kids are being raped they're being uh, god knows whatever else going on we I, I you know we know about what they did with the mustard gas but you know publicly we all know privately uh that's not public of what they did to these children we know about the forced sterilization towards indigenous people and black kids and things like that we know about what happened with japan and um the asian american asians that came here we know about the, what happened to the filipino and um uh Samoan and variety of different cultures of experiment uh, experimentation we've seen all of this to what vicky j said regarding lacking um the rights where is now we all know the answer money but where is the united nation on this because if this happened on any other country maybe outside of, even outside of britain and russia and canada um and japan they will be in our grill like we're going to do sanctions against you and yada 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 for basically violating human rights and, and these and these are human right issues not a citizenship human rights that you know what they are human rights issues but the u.s I can't say that if it was any other country because there are so many human rights issues being being denied across the world that I can't say anywhere close to it was anywhere, anywhere else. There are human rights issues in four countries. I mean, of course, oh, people, yeah. the people who are who are always having their rights taken away are poor people, or you know, the people who are in charge. But I still I can't say if it was any, anywhere else but the U.S. because there are too many countries who are already in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's just a lot of these things just need to, uh, to change. Another thing um, to add to piggyback on this is what was not being talked about is everybody's like, well, why are they coming? A lot of these uh, places where people are coming with the majority of the countries in the world, um, not every single situation, but we have a direct hand, if not indirectly, but definitely direct hand in all of these situations. What's happening just leaving Honduras in a situation, uh, for example, what we've done in terms of um, not ma um, monitoring these countries, I'm sorry, companies that's going into these countries, and people say, well, that's the country's fault. No, it's kind of actually your fault, too. It's sort of like, you know, if I send a kid over to your house and the kid acts up and I tell you, well, that's your fault. No, it's still my responsibility because it's my kid um, as well. We can't sit there and do this uh, just to have the passive dismissive gain when it comes to these countries um and the businesses we understand that you know when just using what happened with uh, previously with the obama administration trying to get um where honduras was trying to remove some of their political leaders but the republican party stopped it because of the uh push and gave them more money because that other political leader was bringing them more money in mm -hmm. but then again the people in honduras was not getting any money so they're struggling and then now you know where we fuss over 750 they barely getting one or two dollars on a good day if that much and then now so we to me a lot of these things is our fault that these countries um is, are so destabilized and what's going on and they do feel they need they have a right to come here i personally don't believe we don't have to be telling people where they can and can't go like that anyway uh because especially if we had a hand in it ladies and when you imagine, um, well, the short answer for the reason that most of this uh, world is in peril is imperialism. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yes, it is y'all's fault. And absolutely, you should continue to leave our doors open for people to come and uh, seek refuge and, and the same opportunities that your ancestors sought when they came over here. Because, I mean, hello, with the exception of Native Americans and ADOS, which is uh, um, African descendants of slavery, or American descendants of slavery, 
With the exception of those two groups of people in this country, everybody, everybody's an immigrant. Can, can I can I can I add in something? Just Please. Like, just to to add on, Miss Miss Vicky, you forgot that um, not every not every African American that's here is a descendant from, from slave ships. There were actually Moors that had already been traveling. So there were actually mm -hmm. Moors living in in what we now call America. There were Moors. I understand that. Wouldn't they be and still Moors, considered having to having migrated here? They they would be, but I'm just saying because because you were naming because you said natives and when people hear natives they um, they automatically as put it with what we now call Native Americans. They don't include the Moors. The Moors are not included in that conversation. So I just wanted to put that out there as a carry out that that I don't want that group to be forgotten. That's 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 how, that's how when you see the if you go to Mexico if you go to the Aztec areas those mm -hmm. statues that you see are those strong you know those strong African features you know I, that's who I, I understand why you did um, end up saying that now I am aware of that but I do understand why you said it because there are plenty of people who are not aware of that yeah um, I'm sorry I, I, the people who um, were on those those ships coming here and who saw the Statue of Liberty and even before the Statue of Liberty was brought over here by France, you know, lots of people forget that too. You know, there's just, this country should be the last place where we are talking about what's mine and, and who doesn't belong here and who belongs here and et cetera and yada blippity block. There are 11 million undocumented people in this country who work our farms. Those people, without them, and who and you constantly complaining, first of all, A, you don't want their job. You wouldn't do their job. You Two, you wouldn't be able to eat without these people who you say you don't want here. Now, if you got your way, you would have a lot of problems that you don't really pay attention to because of your ignorance. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. people who have, and I'm speaking to the people who, you know, act like there's some sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? The people who act like, they mask their racism in these excuses. Those are the people mm -hmm. who I'm talking about. Those people who say, well, if they just come here legally, it shouldn't be a problem. I just have a problem with the people who are jumping the border. Or I just have a problem with the people who are, you know, you know, those folks. I'm talking about them. I'm saying like yeah. those people um, do not have a, have a firm grasp on the reality of their country. No, but they don't want a firm grass. They want the grass that keeps them in that bubble. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the illusion of, or the delusion of superiority. Your comfort, your comfort zone. Yeah. And, and because because here's what's happening. First off, you're right, Vicky J. I just don't think it's 11 million. I really think it's closer to 15, 16. Just, I could be wrong, but it, it just seems like it's way more. The only thing I feel bad in, and I understand why, is that they're so clustered in sometimes in the major cities or in the outlining regions, I think we need to spread everybody out so that everybody can have the chance to grow. And um, because uh, if you're here, you have an opportunity to grow. Uh, but the thing is that they know with the quick, fast, and the hurry, okay, that in five years, they're not going, if, if you stop with the abortion law, stop with all this other stuff, in less than five years, you're not going to be the majority. Now, and what this hold about this number of 67 something uh, percent white, again, for those who are not aware, there are a lot of people who are from Spain and descent that con uh, they do not, and a lot of people who are Latin American and let's, you know, act, that count themselves as white males. Okay. okay. You yeah. have people from Egypt. You have people from Egypt. I who literally, my ex identified as white and he was Egyptian. Yeah, okay. So. Yeah, I worked with a lady. I was like, we just changed the question. Like, if you didn't speak a different language, nobody would know. And mm -hmm. and she marked as white. I'm like, well, we we must have different colored crayon boxes. <laughs> I wish I had the. Um, there's a meme of a young girl going like this. She's like, excuse me. <laughs> so have a have a shade of color for them. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, like, I'm like, you're not even pink. Like, you should have just marked down brown. Like, I'm getting to the point now. Other would be fine. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm, to the point now. I'm like, I'm like, like, my daughter's like, oh, I'm like, look, this is the only thing that's white, this paper. Like, mm -hmm. I, like, it, you can be European, you can be uh, Italian. Don't no one, 
Uh, like no, black, just like for us, they have black non-Hispanic, and then they have don't they like I, I can't remember because I never look at it to check it off. But don't doesn't it say white or slash European descent? Doesn't it say something like that? The, no, not all the time. And no? even if it, and some do, but even if they do, they still mark it as white. Mm. And then the thing is, you have black people who are that same color of that thing, but uh, that's your right. piece of paper. But still I mark Latinos, so especially. Afro-Latino exactly. especially. So, well, label and, themselves and, as Latino and not black. It's a sad thing. You got people who look dead like me, and I'm on the yeah, other side of the like now, who still mark themselves white. I'm and not so, marking myself at all. I'm going to put down pink. Uh, there you go. Now, yeah. Speaking of pink, way off topic. I love you. Do you guys know Miss Jane? No. Miss, I don't um, what's her name? She's the lady from the six, six the 70s. Jane Elliott? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. So I was recently, I love her. Miss Jane, if you're out there, I love you. Oh, yeah. She's one that we protect at all costs. All costs. (laughs) So so there was a lady on one of her shows from, um, I think she was in England, someplace over there. And Mm -hmm. she was a teacher. And the lady was very adamant of, I treat all my kids the same. And I am not racist. And, you know, all this other stuff. I remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. She couldn't understand why Miss Jane was being mean to them. Like you're thinking you're treating everyone like we're all racist and like we're all like one. No one ever said that. But apparently you feel some kind of way about yourself. Yeah. But then she goes on when she's off camera, when she's like in her private room camera, talking uh-huh. about, talking about how she has different kids in her class, you know, mm-hmm. and how and how one kid, um, I think it's I don't know what they call is it white mom, black dad, or whatever it was. I don't know. Right, they, biracial they children. Name. They have a, a certain name for it. Yeah. Thing. And so she said the girl was the prettiest girl, and the girl fell. And when she fell, she scraped herself, and she and the lady saw pink. Mm-hmm. And so she was, and so the teacher, this is the teacher, mind you, yep, old, the teacher. Old, not like not like a two year old, like oh, how are you pink? The teacher was like, I couldn't believe she was pink. I didn't underneath. I don't know what I thought it would be, but I'm like, how? But you didn't think that that they ha- we have the same flesh underneath. Underneath our skin. How, how it was so it? despicable. I remember that, and I, and and she like kind of smirked like it was funny. Yeah, was like, I was I so know. irritated with her. Yeah. And she kept saying, "I don't know what I expected, but it wasn't that." What'd you expect? Chocolate dag on milk? Like, what are you talking about? Out of her, some milk yeah. chocolate, some, some caramel. So she's biracial. Like, what the heck are you talking about, woman? I was like, why should, should, I, should I expect milk to spill out of her mayonnaise? Like, what are you talking about, girl? Why? She, she, she was bugging. I don't even. I, I, I feel like she might have seen the camera. I don't know, but I, she was trying to be funny. Like, no. I, feel like I need to believe that. In order this to not be mad at her and want to jump across the pond. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this was her direct speech to the camera yes. when she was telling them why she didn't need, like, I don't understand. She's calling office racist. It, I'm not going to say you racist, but you have some issues going on with racial things if you think that skin makes somebody different. If you think the color from side to side to side makes your inner different, you, I ain't gonna say, I'm not going to say you're racist. But you have, you have some unintelligence. I'm going to say that. Um, I'm going to give it to her. I'm going to give the title to her because racism is the notion that you are somehow superior to everyone else. Now, if you didn't know what you thought when this little girl scraped her arm and revealed that she's just like you underneath, you had the idea that she wasn't. And that in itself, to me, that's part of the definition of racism. But you thought that you were normal, normal because you have pink under you, and that somehow she wouldn't have because she was infected with blackness. Like I just feel like this chick is all out of her mind. And this is the kind of stuff that people like. I mean, I had to check one to somebody who tried to touch my baby hair because she was just so fascinated. I was like, oh, that's so nice that you think she pretty. That this was me moving her hand out the way. I was like, oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much. That yeah, my baby is beautiful. Absolutely. It, 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 it is like you said in your post. No one takes the t- common decency to say, "May I ask?" Yeah. She, why would she ever think that she had to ask me something, right? Why would she have to ask my permission to touch my child? 
because you know what? Because that is the subconscious. We talk about it. I mention this all the time. It's not what you think. People don't realize. It's subconscious. Directly, sure, you may not be, and you may know her, but your actions subconsciously because you were trained, you were taught, you were conditioned because you can't. And in addition to all this, white privilege. I know people yell at me all the time, but I call it out. Because and it's not the only thing I talk about in post, but I call it out because if you don't point out the differences and things, people will not see it and understand. I call it out so you can know it and can understand it. Example, I called out. We talked. Um, what's the woman's name? Well, uh, Amy Whitehouse, the tortured soul, and we, we should have mercy and buy her albums. But then we called Whitney Houston the crackhead. You know, uh, the, that type of thing. And they didn't right. waste any time trying to bring that up. I mean, the day they found out she died. And I'm so mm -hmm. glad that people, they, they started to try and bring it up. And the people who they were talking to that were close to Whitney were like, we're not answering stuff like that. Next and, and first of all, she's been on this, those who already knew, she's been like this for years. But white privilege that affects us, psychology, psychological, we, white privilege was we dealt with this. Princess, this wholesome image of what this written New Houston was, but what she wasn't. So that's where, you know, uh, and all these things are stuck for just being yourself. I mean, and, they didn't uh, want to say Elvis died sitting on the toilet because he's the king of rock and roll. He's still alive mm -hmm. um, in Honduras or wherever he is. Like <laughs> but yeah, you know, they didn't want to talk about all of his demons, so to speak, and all of his, you know, drug problems. But I mean, my man was sweating like a whole entire pig on a spit on them stages mm -hmm. in them last days, you know? Exactly. And struggling. You use the theater. And you see, you know, you you know you're done when you can't finish your songs and you just hold a mic and let the audience sing half the songs. Get mm -hmm. by then. Get off the stage, you know. Watch your tours on the Rhino. You know what is it? Probably go to these on the Rhino Records and call it. <laughs> and leave it alone. Time life music. But um, ladies, I want to say, uh, well, as always, we have fun and things. We can definitely continue on. But um, I don't want to take y'all ladies' time on a Thursday night. Um, and y'all have families and other uh, activities to get in. Uh, yeah, get I definitely have to cook dinner. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to. I wanted to say thank you uh, so very much. First, before you go, please, ladies, uh, tell us um, uh, the world what a uh, little bit about yourself, if you like, and uh, plugs, information, where they can contact, throw your cash app out there so we can give you some money. <laughs> you know, I, I'm about that. You know, hey, you know, if it was any other show, if it was any of those ratchet shows on Instagram or whatever, they'd be like, hey, throw, run me my money on this cash app. So, hey, we're just going to do it professionally. Uh, uh, I you know honestly I don't know all of my stuff I should this is really bad so my name is I'm ex Julie who is training so I work with my clients um, to get them in better health I don't believe we all have the same size but we all will give them hearts and one body to work with so I do believe in making your body your best no one you guys should look like me there's only one of you but you should be the best you that you so I. Can, that, um, I'm on Twitter. I'm extra Jalise on Twitter. That one's easy. Extra Jalise on Twitter. Instagram. I'm extra zo. Extra dot zo. X X T R A dot X O. Extra zo on Instagram. And on Instagram, right. Twitter. If I get feedback, I'll try to send out um, little things to help you with your workouts. On Instagram, I can send out some workouts. Yes, you gotta go to bed. <laughs> On Instagram, I'll actually send out um, some workouts every now and then when I'm thinking about it. So, yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah, let me know how I can help or if you need any email. Help. Email. Email, I don't check that often, to be honest. So I'm not going to give it to you. If you're, trying okay. to reach me, if you're trying to reach me, Twitter or Extra Zone, because that comes up looking to my phone and my email gets lost. I have like 20,000 I need to go to right now. Okay, not a problem. All right, so we will we'll, we'll deal with that from there. Thanks, and while you add it, find your error, cash app, your PayPal, whatever we can do to make sure you get you going. And Miss Vicky J, I am Vicky J on all the platforms, <laughs> like literally all of them. <laughs> I've had this moniker since I was like sixteen, so <laughs> it's like 
<laughs> it's, I'm on all of them. And, and it's Vicky J at Gmail. If you want to hit me up, I am also Vicky J on Cash App with that dollar sign in front of it. I mean, if you want, whatever. Do, so, do me a um, favor. I'm going to type, I'm going to, I'm typing this in, in right now. So, because unfortunately on the thing, it says your name. So spell Vicky J for everybody, please. Vicky J is spelled V I K double E J E A H. Okay, so I'm putting that uh, up on the screen now, so sort of thing, because I know I spell it all the time. But thank you. Uh, so that is Twitter. That's Facebook. That's uh, Gmail. That's Cash App. That's PayPal. Um, it's the Gmail uh, email for PayPal. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I said Twitter. Da, da, da. Oh, and YouTube. I do YouTube things. I do beauty stuff. And wow. so if you want to hit me up there, I'm the high end makeup snob, Vicky J. That's all you got to put in. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be like her and get mine all together and know them. <laughs> I just reviewed the Jackie Ina palette for all my brown girls out there. So please do check out my YouTube channel for that review. Thank, Thank you. you very much and things like that. Snob, we don't know about the makeup part, but Snob, yet. <laughs> no, you're not. Uh, these are two of the world, some of the loveliest women I have, uh, power women I have ever known in the world. So if they speak it, uh, you better listen. Whether you now, they may or may not always be right, but you better act like it. And, so, <laughs> um, and for those who don't know, first of all, I want to apologize for my appearance. If you're wondering what in the world's going on with Stephen, uh, happened to have an accident. Oh, no, no, uh, you know, I was ducking and diving and caught one. You should have seen the other guy. No, just teasing. Um, <laughs> I had to have a little bit of a dental thing going on, but. I'm that guy that's going to keep on going, go through, you know, you're always going to go through challenges and every day is not going to be your best day, but you still got to keep on going and give it your best. So that's why I'm still here doing it. Uh, but I'm the one and only Mr. LP, Stephen Sizer, the capital R, none of that lower case. And uh, we're in live in global media, E-N-L-I-V-E-N global media. Uh, we are finding us on our Facebook, YouTube, uh, God knows everywhere else you'll see it all underneath there. So have fun. Look at your hashtags. Uh, our uh, my cash app is I am Mr. LP, but <laughs> you can look at it live in GM at Gmail is our email, and also for our uh, PayPal and things like that if you feel to contribute. And if you have any questions or comments, concern, please feel free to send me a comment, a message, where have you contact these beautiful ladies if you have any questions or send it to me, and I'll make sure they're answered. And trust me, they will answer. <laughs> they like, what they say? So uh, please. Uh, uh, feel free to join in if you have any questions or concerns. We'll be happy to help you out. And uh, we look forward uh, to doing more of these. Uh, we've been trying to do these on specials, but if your response is that you want more of it, please well, just join on in. Shout out to all the other wonderful people of Enlive and Global Media. Uh, shout out to Coach Crum and uh, also Tracy Hardy Scott. They're celebrating their uh, wedding anniversaries this weekend. So please shout out to them all. And uh, blessings to y'all. And please, if nothing else, be safe and good to each other. I love you all. Thank you and have a blessed day, everybody. Bye-bye.